the teaching that was given to him. When we categorize them together, there are 84,000 uh, methods of cultivation. And among so many um, methods that was given to him, how do we start? How do we choose among so many choices? Every one, every method given, chose by him, I mean, given by Buddha is correct, but which one is the one suitable for us? This is a very important um, point for us, something we need to concern about when we're learning. So when learning Buddhism, when you go to a temple, uh, burn some incense to offer to the Buddha or offering flower to the triple gem. Um, so we do all this and some people might thought that's it for Buddhism. That's all that is to Buddhism. However, true, uh, like if you actually want to learn Buddhism, where do we start? Where do we begin? We must be cleared and we must be uh, aware of that, of this aspect. Otherwise, we will waste our time when we learn. Uh, otherwise, we spend all these years reap nothing in return, like learn nothing in return. Uh, in the past, uh, us uh, who chant Amitabha, um, our patriarch said that everyone who chant Amitabha, who practice this method, will be able to reach Pure Land. No one is left behind. But why, in reality, so many people seem like chanting Amitabha but not getting there? Because we have habits that stops us from getting to there. What is the cause? What is the habits that stop us from getting to Pure Land? That's why we need to discuss it today. If we're not clear what obstacle lies in front of us, how do we get blessings, actual blessings, actual help uh, from Buddha and Bodhisattvas? It became religion instead, unfortunately. If we do not understand how, where do we begin learning Buddhism? And that's what we are trying to discuss today. Uh, where do we begin in Buddhism, in learning Buddhism? Where do we enter? Which door do we enter into this vast ocean? Let's continue next slide. Uh, in Chinese Mahayana Buddhism, we usually uh, use four bodhisattvas uh, as a method to um, educate everyone. Uh, in Chinese uh, mountains, there are four very famous Buddhist mountains. In Zhouhua, there's Sitikaba, Dijang, Bodhisattva, Puto for Guanyin, and Erme for the Pusian, and Wutai for the Manjushri Bodhisattva. There are four big bodhisattvas. And they are commonly used in education of Buddhism. So what do they represent? We must be clear. What do they represent? What do these four bodhisattvas symbolize? First, it reflects it shows when we learn Buddhism, we need to have an order of learning, like primary, secondary, tertiary. Or, in other words, when we learn, we need to have a sequence. We need to follow a certain steps, a sequence when we learn Buddhism. Step one, step two, step three, step four. One by one, step by step. Why? Because it depends on our capability, like you're born, you're born with certain capability. Some people who are what we call genius immediately can reach the highest level in Buddhism. But for all, for us, uh, in the common uh, level, we need to follow the steps one by one so that we can learn it. We actually can learn it. So these four bodhisattvas, among all four of them, whom do we start with? 
It's very important questions. Uh, and what do they represent? This spirit, as in what value do they represent? All of them, each of them has represent uh, four core values when we're learning Buddhism that we need to master, we need to grasp. Uh, as a Buddhist, we need to um, master and hold on to this value. So what are these four values that we should learn from Bodhisattvas? We will talk about that in detail later. So, for example, Bodhisattva Siddhikarpa, uh, what did Siddhikarpa or in Chinese Dizang, of treasure, uh, represents? Uh, and what level of attainment, other than order of learning, second one is the, order, the level of attainment in Buddhism. What is level of attainment? That means how the level of wisdom, the scale, the, the depth, the, the horizon of their wisdom, uh, which level are they in, uh, represents, sorry. And number three is to improve your capability, your skills, uh, uh, your wisdom uh, to see through the realities in this uh, world we we'll call Saha world or the world that is messy we're full of false will false thoughts and all that how do you see through it knowing right and wrong and how do you solve it it all relies on your level of attainment if our level of attainment did not increase how do we have wisdom with higher wisdom means our level of attainment better and we can get better at handling the world these four bodhisattva represents that, so we need to learn about them. However, let's continue. Although these four bodhisattvas represent different aspects, you know, different uh, spirits, stage of learning Buddhism, like Manjushri Bodhisattva, what do they represent? Or the universal worthy Bodhisattva, what do they mean? Uh, they all represent different uh, value, but their goal, their, their, their um, principle, they are all, how to say, encompassing one another. We call it well-roundedness. Right? For example, uh, Siddhikapa, Buddha, uh, Bodhisattva, whatever he, value he represents, whatever virtues he has, Bodhisattva Guan Yin has it, Bodhisattva Manjushri has it, Bodhisattva Universal Worthy has it. Four is one, one is four. So, right? One of them has a very specialized virtue, but each others have the same virtues as they. It's just they trying to stand out to help us. Doesn't matter which four of the Bodhisattva you choose, uh, these four big Bodhisattvas, uh, among four of them, we do need to know which order of learning, where do we start and then where do we end. That's the reason why they split into four. Uh, so you cannot jump the queue. Uh, can be like, I like Guan Yin Bodhisattva, I, I learn straight from her. Nothing's wrong with that. All right, Manjushri Bodhisattva represents wisdom. I learned straight from him. Nothing's wrong with that. However, why we have this order of learning is we might uh, waste our energy if we skip the steps. Every Bodhisattva are actually well-rounded and perfect. That means they have everything. 